Hello, me again. So one of the things I've been talking about a lot recently is installing Ubuntu using a USB key, doing a clean install of Ubuntu. And that's pretty common for a lot of people. That's how people get their installation done. But a lot of people already have Ubuntu installed and they may want to upgrade to a new release. And with 2004 on the horizon coming at the end of April, I thought I'd show how you might go about upgrading from the existing LTS release, 1804, up to 2004. Now, of course, 2004 is not out yet, so I do not recommend you do this right now. Unless you're an enthusiast or you're partaking in some testing uh, and you're going to provide some feedback or fixes uh, to whatever it is that you find is broken or that you're able to fix the system yourself because... As I said, 24 hour, 2004 is not out yet, not until the end of April. Uh, so yeah, don't do this. But if you want to do this, here's how you do it. So I'm starting on a base of 1804. This is my trusty X220. Uh, it's got a i7 CPU, a disk, and some RAM. Um, and it's currently running 1804. And what I want to do is follow one of the guides that details how you go about upgrading and there's a tutorial on the Ubuntu website if you go to community there's a link here to Ubuntu tutorials and there's a whole load of these I've shown these before you can do a search for tutorials so if I do a search for um, Ubuntu upgrade I should find one okay there's one this is the tutorial upgrading the desktop so this is a pretty straightforward tutorial. It says it will take about 20 minutes, but that doesn't take into account download speed and um, the speed of your computer and your hard drive or SSD and so on. And this is also a really generic tutorial. There are separate release notes for each release of Ubuntu for upgrading, um, and they're linked to as you go throughout this. But this one is a little bit older, and um, that's fine because actually the upgrade process is pretty much the same from uh, most releases of Ubuntu. So I'm going to dive in to this tutorial and see how we go. I haven't actually tried this yet, so uh, we will see how we get on. Now, step one, before you start, we recommend that you back up your existing installation. Well, I've already done that. I booted from a CloneZilla USB key, and I took a clone of this system onto an external 2 terabyte hard drive, which you can see there. That folder contains a backup that I did just over an hour ago. So I have got a backup and I'm now going to eject that uh, two terabyte drive because I'm going to unplug it uh, so it's nice and safe and doesn't get affected by anything I do during this upgrade. So I've got a backup. I'm happy with that. In the event that anything goes catastrophically wrong with the upgrade, I can restore that with CloneZilla and I'll be back to how I was before I did the upgrade. So it's, it's also useful because what I could do is just do the upgrade, prove that it works, and report on the Ubuntu ISO tracker, which I think is this link? No, this one? Yes. Report on the ISO tracker that upgrade worked from 1804 to 2004. And then I can restore back to 1804 and then try it again, you know, in a week's time or something or uh, at a later date, closer to the actual release. So Clonezilla is super useful. And I've made a video about Clonezilla before. Super useful for you to be able to take a snapshot and then you know, monkey with your system and then put it back to how it was and know that it's bit for bit exactly as it was. So I've done the backup and uh, I'm just going to go through the uh, the slides, uh, the steps in this uh, tutorial. So the first thing it says is I need to open Update Manager or Software Updater. Again, this is um, slightly older. Uh, so I'll launch Software Updater. Now the reason for launching Software Updater is to make sure I've got the latest packages on my system. And the reason for doing that is uh, there are fixes to the upgrade process which are in the software updater package. And you want to be on the latest version of that and all the other tools it depends on and all the other bits and bobs because the generally supported path to upgrade an Ubuntu system is from an up-to-date system to the next release. We don't generally recommend you upgrade from a clean install that's not had all the software updates on it because there may well be bugs in there that will not manifest themselves on a clean install but will at the point when you try and do the upgrade 
So you're likely to have a more successful upgrade by updating the system first and putting all the packages on for the release that you're on, then reboot, then start the actual upgrade proper. So that's why it's suggesting we go through software update. Now I've already done this and my system is up to date. Uh, as I showed you earlier, I'm on 1804.4, which is the latest of the 1804 LTS cycle. So that's that done. Um, and it just takes you through, you know, do the updates. Now, the next thing uh, is something that uh, we can show um, software and updates. Uh, this one here. It's called something slightly different in different releases. But what this is talking about is this updates tab here. And uh, the one that it shows down here is the notify me of Ubuntu version. So what this is, is this is how you control whether your system gets prompted for upgrades to the next release. Now bear in mind that some releases of Ubuntu are LTS releases and some are not. So for example, if we go to wiki.ubuntu.com slash releases, you can see all the releases of Ubuntu that there have ever been. I'll just make this a tiny bit bigger. So I'm currently on 1804.4. And I could go to 1910, which is an interim release, or I could go to the next LTS, which is 2004, when that comes out in, in April. Um, whereas 1604 would jump to 1804, and if you're on 1404, that would jump to 1604. So we're at a, a, a kind of funny time in the, in the cycle with, uh, with Ubuntu right now, because you've got multiple supported LTS releases and soon there's going to be another one at the end of April and only one supported interim release because the previously uh, released 19, uh, 1904, where has it gone? Where is it? Down here, is now end of life. Disco Dingo went end of life two months ago. So uh, if you're on this LTS, really the only two choices you have is go to the next interim release or go to the next LTS so personally, I'd recommend staying on 1804 until 2004 comes out. And the reason why I mention that is because this dialog here has a little drop down, which says you choose, do I want to upgrade to whatever the next version available is, or do I only want to, sub to up update to the next LTS? And a lot of people who run the LTS only ever want to upgrade to the next LTS, and so choose that one. And some people just want they've already installed the LTS but actually they just want the next greatest release whatever that is and so that's that option there and some people never want to be prompted with hey there's a new release out so that lets you control now if I choose for any version then at some point I'm going to get a pop-up box saying hey you could upgrade 1804 to 1910 but I don't want to do that I want to go to 2004 and so I would use this one here now bear in mind if I choose to um, this option, you won't actually get the prompt to upgrade to 2004 as soon as 2004 comes out. That prompt is usually not enabled until 2004.1 comes out, which is a couple of months later. And so if you look through the past releases, if you were on 1604, when 1804 came out, in April 2018, you probably wouldn't have got the prompt to upgrade. You probably wouldn't have got it until 1804.1, which happened in July. So it's a couple of months later after the release of the LTS when a point release comes out, which wraps up lots of updates, uh, bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. That's when you get the, the prompt. So if you're on 1804.4 LTS, you probably won't get the prompt to go to 2004 until 2004.1 in a few months time however what i want to do today is forcibly upgrade and so while this dialogue is interesting it's not actually super useful to me uh, what i want to do is force the upgrade and so in here it talks about what i've just said basically uh, and tells you you know how you could uh, what that prompt would look like and how you could upgrade from the current release to the next one but then it says, if no upgrade appears, you can force it with this update manager minus D. Uh, and this is somewhat dangerous <laughs> because um, there is the possibility that you, if you're currently on 2004 and you didn't realize it, and we, we're you know, at some point in the future, hello the future, 
uh, let's say we're at November, December time, 2020, and someone runs update manager minus D, then they're going to go from whatever release they're on to um, 20.10, which is quite a, um, a, a jump and is not necessarily where you want to be. So you have to be careful when using this um, command line option and forcing the upgrade because it can take you to a release that maybe you didn't want to go to. But I know what I'm doing, <laughs> so I'm going to do this. Um, and again, it does show that this tutorial um, is a little outdated because it has older screenshots. I mean, it's not really outdated because there are still plenty of people who are running 16.04 and want to upgrade to 18.04. So it's not it's not wrong. It's just not showing the current screenshots. That's all. So where were we? Oh yes, it said open a terminal and run update manager. Manager minus D. Let's see what that does. Ooh, here we go. Here's that dialogue that it showed up here. The one that says, uh, hey, your software's up to date, but there's 2004 available. And because I did minus D, the, uh, the minus D switch, that's what's forcing it to give me this option. So let's do it. This is now starting that upgrade. Because I didn't start it with sudo, I have to put in my password. Here we go. So here's the you are still you are about to upgrade to Focal Foster. It's not technically 2004 yet. It's still in development. We tend to use this code name up until the point of release. Once the once the uh, the version of Ubuntu goes out, it will have 2004 LTS written there. But up until that point, we give it the code name and it gives you the usual warning. It's in development. Don't install it on production machines and then gives you links to where you can report bugs and participate, which is awesome. But I'm just going to hit the button. OK, here we go. So this is the start of the upgrade. It's going to go and do a whole load of pre-flight checks to see what state your system is in before the upgrade. And then it's going to start downloading files and installing packages. And the interesting thing about an Ubuntu upgrade is like technically what it's doing under the covers is just upgrading all the packages. So for example, uh, what package do I have installed? Let's let's use Firefox as an example. App cache policy Firefox. Right. So uh, let's make this bigger. So the version I currently have installed of Firefox is Firefox 24, the build that was made for 18.04. But the upgrade tool, this tool here, has modified my sources list. And so now the candidate that we're going to go to is this one. I mean, technically, it's the same major version of Firefox. But the difference is this is coming from the archive from Focal. And bear in mind, I was on Bionic and now I'm moving to Focal. So Really, all the upgrade is doing at a fundamental level is upgrading all my packages from the version of the package that was in Bionic to the version of the pa package that's in Focal. That's really all it's doing. There are some wrappers around that, some pre-flight checks and some um, additional uh, ways of catching certain error situations that you wouldn't normally get. So it's got some extra belt and braces in there. Technically, it's just upgrading a bunch of packages. And as you can see here, it says there are a bunch that are no longer supported by Canonical. You can still get support from the community. What that means is if I do apt cache show Firefox, for example, um, Firefox lives in main. Um, does it show that here anywhere? Where is it? Hmm. I thought it showed that here. Oh, there we go. Pool main. There we go. So this is the package for the Firefox web browser. And somewhere in here it says main. Uh, you can see it's in the main part of the repository. And you can see down here it says supported 5Y. That means five years. So that means that this package is in the main part of the repository. And what this line here where it says 57 packages are no longer supported by Canonical, that means 
there's a bunch of packages which were in main which no longer are they've gone and moved into universe which means they're community maintained so for example they may be obsolete they may be old they may no longer be um they may have been replaced by something new so for example there may be a bunch of python 2 based stuff that's moved to python 3 and so the python 2 stuff is no longer supported gets moved to universe <clears throat> 16 packages are going to be removed uh 309 new ones are going to be installed and over a thousand are going to be upgraded so as part of the upgrade there's new stuff coming there's stuff that's old and crafty and needs to be removed and there's stuff that's just going to be replaced like firefox for example you have a lot to download should take four minutes that's optimistic uh it can take several hours you can open up the little details switcheroo so if you want to see what all these uh things are you know certain things old versions of compilers and old versions of utilities and all kinds of stuff that, that are just no longer supported that get removed and then you can see the individual packages that are going to be installed and you can see uh which ones are going to be upgraded and yeah you know, if you scroll down far enough you should find firefox in that list uh, among all the others um there we go there's firefox so yeah loads of packages that are going to be uh replaced Ooh. oh no go okay, let's try and make this a bit smaller oh i can't oh no let's hit start upgrade and hope the window shrinks okay so lock screen has been disabled remain disabled until you reboot so this is the kind of thing i'm talking about where update manager tries to do things which protect you during that upgrade process and I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just hit the button and start the upgrade going because it's going to take a while. Right. So there are online guides that will tell you the way to upgrade is to just go and edit your etc app sources.list, change it to uh, focal or whatever the next release is, and then just do apt update, apt dist upgrade or apt full upgrade. And that may work. It might. It might not. And that little dialogue that popped up that says I'm going to turn off the lock screen is an example of one of those extra guards that's put in by update manager to protect users who are going through this process of a major upgrade and a major upgrade like this can take some time especially if you're on a slow connection so here I'm downloading at what is it four meg a second if you had a slower connection it would take a lot longer uh, and if you had a slower machine the pro the processing after this download would take longer and there's the possibility your screensaver may kick in or the screen lock may kick in now the problem with that is the the screen lock is a fundamental part of the desktop and there is a known problem where if the one of those fundamental pieces that makes up like gnome shell the lock screen if that gets upgraded while the screen is locked it can become impossible to unlock the screen so it would be a good idea right now not to lock the screen, which is why that it gets disabled. Now, there are other things that happen under the covers as well to um, protect the user when they're upgrading from one release to another. It's not perfect. And, you know, there's still the possibility that the user might do something stupid like slam the lid shut and pull the power cable out or, you know, do something daft along the way. But what Update Manager tries to do is tries to get as successful an upgrade as possible when you go from one release to another. So that's why we generally recommend use the Graphical Update Manager in order to do this. There is a command line counterpart to this. So I ran Update, update Manager. Okay, but there's also Do Release Upgrade. And they do similar things. Um, do release upgrade is useful where you have a command line only system. So if you've got a server that you wanted to upgrade from one LTS to another, or if you're doing it remotely, so you've SSH into a machine and you want to upgrade it, you could do do release upgrade. And then you don't have to have this graphical environment up um, and you could do it all over SSH. And do release upgrade also has certain additional features that protect the user while they're doing these upgrades so this is going to take some time 
So what I'm going to do is leave this chugging away and we'll come back to it when it does something that requires some interaction. I, I don't know if there will be any because I haven't tested this upgrade yet, but it may well stop and ask me to do something or it may stop and just tell me it's done. <laughs> Fingers crossed it's the latter. But uh, let's see how that goes and we'll come back in a little while. So we rejoin the process as it's getting towards the end. It's already installed a whole bunch of package upgrades uh, and now it's doing what it calls cleaning up. I guess that's going to remove a bunch of packages as well. Uh, once it gets to the end, it's just a case of restarting the system. It's probably not a good idea for me to carry on trying to use the system after the upgrade has happened. Um, Dialogue is kind of annoying, so I should be able to. Whoops, should be able to move this as they remove. It, it does tell you what it's going to remove. So, if you particularly care about any of these pieces of software, you might want to reinstall them again after the upgrade cleanup has finished. I'm just going to say remove. That won't take very long. So now I should be able to restart the system. I'm just going to close my browser tidily and it should reboot into Ubuntu Focal 2004. Okay, so it's rebooting now. Fingers crossed everyone. Hope this works. I know a lot of people will probably leave uh, comments down below telling me don't upgrade you should always clean install and uh, I'm kind of torn on this because a lot of people do actually like to upgrade their system I'm one of those people that installs Ubuntu and then keeps it on their system for a long time and then just upgrades and upgrades and upgrades over time but I know some people prefer a clean install Okay, I've got the login screen on my other display. Just log in. And then I'll switch displays so you can see the desktop. There we go, successfully upgraded. So I should be able to go to settings. And yes, down here in about, which did show details previously, you can see now it looks slightly different uh, and says there Ubuntu Focal Foster Development Branch, which uh, will change at some point to 2004. Interestingly, I'm using Wayland. I was not aware of that. I didn't, I didn't specifically choose that, but looks like it's using it okay. So that's cool. Um, so now that I'm on Ubuntu Focal, I can just use the uh, software updater to keep this system up to date and I could continue using Ubuntu Focal until the end of April. Uh, we've got a few weeks left until um, the 23rd of April when the uh, 2004 release comes out. But if you just keep accepting the updates as you go through, um, as long as you're happy to keep Ubuntu Focal on your system, then you can do that but that was for me a successful upgrade uh, your mileage may vary if it doesn't work then let me know um, I know some people have real trouble with upgrades sometimes and that's partly why they prefer to do clean installs but there you go it does work sometimes okay thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time